advanced study in engineering. Oh, thank you, Nabiha. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Master of Advanced Study in Engineering, aka Mass E. Today is our info session. It's October 6th, 5 p.m. California time. And we are so excited to have you join us. Um, let's see. So this is our agenda, welcoming you right now. Um, we're gonna um, say a little bit about myself and my colleague Nabiha in a second. We're gonna uh, give you an overview of this Mass E program, the sh program structure and concentrations, learning experience and support, um, costs and funding options, admissions and upcoming timelines, and then we'll reserve the last part for any Q&A you all have. Um, so a little introduction. I'm Janine Bernard. I'm the Associate Director of Student Operations in the Fung Institute and my colleague. Hello, I'm Nabiha. I also work at the Fung Institute and I'm a Student Services oh. Advisor. Yes, thank you, Nabiha. And she'll be monitoring the chat if anybody has any questions. Um, you know, it's hard to, to stop while you're talking. <laughs> All right, everybody. So what is MASCI? -E? So what is this Master's in Advanced Study in Engineering? So this is Berkeley's Engi Berkeley College of Engineering's first fully online master's program. Um, it's built for professional, uh, it's, it's built for working engineers, STEM professionals, and recent engineering graduates. Um, the courses are taught by Berkeley faculty and lecturers. They're developed and, off and delivered by faculty and lecturers here at Berkeley. Um, and this professional degree is focused on immediately applicable skills that are in demand. So this is different than a master's in art, a master's in science, which are very traditional and very research-based, thesis-based, and usually they're on the way to a PhD. The um, Mass E is um, a practical professional program, which you the skills are meant to to be, like I said, immediately applicable in that field. Um, and a lot of our students, and we'll get into it, are working professionals. Um, okay, so the learning model we're one hundred percent online and fully asynchronous. Um, within each 12 to 15 week period. So asynchronous means that all the material is online and students self-pace themselves. Um, there is no, you know, Monday, Wednesdays, 2 to 3.30 p.m. class. It's all self-paced, but we definitely do not recommend our students wait until the last minute. So essentially each term, you're given a deadline at the end, one week before the semester ends and you have to finish everything by then. We provide deadlines for each um, each assignment that is due, but if you can't make it, that's fine as long as you submit it, but we, again, strongly encourage you to meet our deadline so that you're not kind of set, setting yourself up for a challenging end of the term. Um, so yeah, so it's self-paced study each week. There's no required lectures. Um, there is support via GSIs here at Berkeley. We like to elongate things. So GSIs, graduate student instructor, is a TA, a teaching assistant. So there is support from GSI TAs. There are live faculty office hours. There are tutors, and then there are peer groups. We have a community on Slack um, with a global peer network. And, and, you know, I think some of them might even keep in touch um, through WhatsApp which I think is a little bit more accessible internationally, but we provide the Slack kind of forum for these kind of relationships to develop. The program structure itself is 24 total units to graduate. And most courses are one unit. Oh, well, all are one unit except for now, except for the capstone, which is two units. So typically, um, so there's 22 courses that you must take, each for one unit, and then there's a two-unit capstone, which adds up to the 24. And we provide a flexible pace. It's about a two to four years 
uh, program and we are calculating that most will complete in about two to three years, depending on the load that you take. And so this is fall, spring and summer. So the and the course selection differs from term to term. But you know, if you take three to four courses per term, you I think you're on pace to finish within three, three and a half years. Um, some people like to take more. Some people are taking less some semesters and taking more other semesters. So it's whatever works for you. Um, the residency period, this is a little different than like permanent residency or California residency. Residency here refers to how many time, how many enrollment terms you can, you have to be enrolled in, in order to achieve a, ma a master's degree. So essentially, you just need to enroll for two terms minimum uh, with a greater than or equal to four units each in order to achieve that graduation, which will come in two to four years. Um, and then so as long as two terms, you have four units or more, you'll meet that requirement. Um, there are and there are four interdisciplinary concentrations, um, each with its own requirements, and then electives that you can choose from from our list of courses. So the concentrations are infrastructure, energy and environment, infrastructure, energy and environment, electron electronics and systems engineering, advanced manufacturing and materials, and robotics and controls. So you're to take the required courses in your chosen concentration. Um, and then actually let me link this in the chat. I have it, I had it ready. We can take a look there. And this is, it shows all of the 33 courses. And then if you can filter by concentration, so you can see what each concentration requires. And then, um, and then the 33 courses are the full catalog. So we take these 22 one unit courses, but you still need these two, you know, these two units in order to complete the cap, in order to complete the program and the capstone culminating experience. So this experience integrates and applies learning to a real world engineering challenge. Um, you will be guided for, by Berkeley faculty and this in industry inspired problem context. So we haven't gotten to this part of the program just yet because our this program started taking uh started enroll started enrolling students in fall 2024. So we haven't had our first graduating or capstone experience yet, but through we imagine that it'll be a lot like our master of engineering capstone experience, which is a 9 month on campus program. Um, and so we are fully, um, so we have been running that program for years and years. So I would imagine we take our, um, our learning and experience from that and apply it to this program. And so you'll be able to build a portfolio ready outcome aligned to your goals. And so here's a program overview. You can see flexible and customizable, perfect for working professionals. Again, 100% online, asynchronous with optional office hours among Berkeley faculty and lecturers, um, one unit courses that can be completed in seven weeks, um, but they can, you know, last the full term. Um, but if, you know, if you want to finish it early, I think you can. And again, the four interdisciplinary concentrations to choose from. And then once again, the degree requirements of Eight units come from concentration requirements. 14 units are electives. And then you have those two capstone units, which are required as well. Um, and so it's some new courses that are being offered are 210B, um, Engineering and Net Zero Carbon Future, 264, Applied Continuum Mechanics, 253, Flying Robots, <laughs> from small drones to aerial taxis. Um, 202A human centered design um, methods. And then some popular courses, molecular imaging methods, R&D clinical trials, beta testing, renewable energy systems, 
radio pharmaceuticals, this is a big word, <laughs> and then development of modern materials for microelectronics. So you can see there's a, a vast kind of applicability that these courses offer. Now let's talk about costs and funding. So as of now, for the 25-26 academic year, and that includes summer 26, tuition is 1750 per unit, or about 42000 for a total of 24 units. And I say that's the cost for this academic year because the costs can change, but we won't know until July of the upcoming academic year. And these are managed by UCLP, Office of the President, University of California, Office of the President. So, but we're giving you the cost as it stands now. So tuitions, 1,750 per unit, plus there's campus fees of about a thousand per term. Um, and this is, oh, I, I jumped ahead. I, it's that this is established in July of each year. And some con some funding common funding paths are employer tuition assistance and external scholarship and external scholarships. Um, Mass E scholarships are available, but they are limited. Um, we give maybe four to seven awards each term, and they essentially cover the cost of two courses, so about thirty five hundred dollars. Um, but again, this isn't guaranteed. It's we open up an application to new admits each term you apply and then a committee reviews and decides who receives these awards um some other payment options there is a campus fee payment plan and third-party contracts which is if your employer offers tuition essentially the third-party contract is between the university and your employer and then there's a, a, a way to get that all processed. Um, if and when that happens, you can reach out to us for help. Um, mm -hmm. And quick note, Mass E is a self-supporting professional program. So federal aid is not available. So you don't qualify for FAFSA and um, or state funding. Um, and 90% of our students are self-funded. So who typically enrolls? Working professionals, many with five years plus experience who maybe they've realized they've kind of hit a ceiling in their in their area or in their company, in their institution, and they want to, you know, gain these skills to have applicability and, and keep moving up. Um, we also have recent graduates. I spoke to a couple this morning that one just finished in May and one is not even finishing until 2027. So it's a, a large varying kind of population. Um, there, these, these cohorts are global across industries and time zones. Um, and then learners balance career, family, and study. So it's, it's built for flexibility. Um, and as of 20, as of spring 2025, um, we had 90% of our students were employed full time, 37% were half time students, uh, and, and then 55% were part time students. So half time students with the four units, and then 55% part time students with under four units. And then in terms of admissions and upcoming deadlines, um, we review applications holistically. So we take into account your academic preparation, your professional experience and your goals. Um, and so you choose a concentration at the time of you submitting your application and, and then either electives allow exploration into other fields. Um, and applications are open right now for summer 2026. The deadline for that being February 11th. So right now we're accepting applications for summer 2026. Um, some potential FAQs, we kind of brainstormed. Do the classes fill up? Nope, there are no seating caps once the course is live. 
Are there live sessions? Nope, not required. Only optional office hours. Like I said, totally re everything's recorded and posted and asynchronous. Can employers pay directly? Yes, via third-party contracts. Do you need to be in the United States to be in the program? No, the program is fully online. And do I get a student ID? You may get a Cal One card ID. It's optional for on-campus services. So if you're if you're in the area, you know, that might be helpful to you. But obviously, if you're in Denmark or, you know, Taiwan, that's not going to help you. But the, we do pr uh, provide that for our Mass E students that are in the area. And so next steps, explore the concentrations you're interested in, draft a course plan, a tentative course plan for yourself. Um, confirm whether your employer has any of these tuition benefits and then confirm uh, their timelines and then prepare application materials and statement of purpose. So actually I have, I brought up, these are some materials that are provided by the graduate division. And these are kind of prompts and a breakdown of how to write your statement of purpose and personal history statement. Those are the, so when you submit your, your application, you'll submit your transcripts, you'll submit your um, letters of recommendation, you'll submit, and then you'll also submit your um, essays. And the way, the, the way that I always explain it to students or potential applicants is your statement of purpose is kind of what you're what you are planning to do in this program and just kind of definitive steps even though those might change right um definitive steps to say to to kind of show that you are serious and interested and really motivated the personal history statement couches that in a context of what brought you into this discipline what brought you to you know, want to work on these, you know, problems plaguing the world um, and how to attempt to fix them using engineering science. Um, and just really, we want to get to know who you are, who you are as a student, who you are as an engineer, who you are as a leader. Um, and same goes with your letters of recommendation. I always recommend that your letter writers can really speak to who you are as a student, who you are as a leader or as a researcher or as X, Y, and Z. Um, and it it is in your best interest to get somebody who can really speak truly to that. Because if you just get somebody who's like, oh, you know, so-and-so, they're, they're fine. You know, that almost does more damage than it does good. So choose your letter writers wisely so that we really truly get to know who you are and then the potential that you bring to the program. But with that being said, here's our website, here's our email, and the, the floor is open for any questions, comments, concerns. We're here to, to answer whatever you, whatever questions you have.